Okay, woohoo. I think I have got a live cast going on Facebook, which is very exciting, but you can also just watch it on Zoom from the link from my website. Um, let's do this. This is all so very glamorous. Not really. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we are here. It's January 6, 2020, and we're going to talk about kids' summer camp planning. I feel like we were just back. We were together again. Well, we were together on Friday, and now we're back. Um, we're talking about goal setting on Friday. Today, we're talking about kids' summer camp. So maybe the two coincide. Who knows? Um, but I am curious if anyone went back and actually did the exercise on the replay after they got the worksheet. So there's a really cool worksheet that I attached to the blog post that you can kind of go through with the video and write down, um, you know, come to determine what your goals are for like doing the exercise and determine what your goals are for 2020 as far as in your business and even personally. So kind of a fun thing to do. You can find that on the blog. Um, and I encourage you to share those goals. Whatever you've determined are your goals, share them with your friends, your family, um, whoever. And you know what, even share them on social media, why not? Because there's something like really powerful about kind of announcing it to this audience that we've created for ourselves on social media. And we're not doing it, you know, so other people will react or like it or not like it, it's just, a place to be kind of accountable for something that you set out to do. I think that can be a really cool thing. So if you've got um, the guts to do it, I say go for it. All right. It doesn't matter what anybody else has to say about it. Um, and then if you do decide to announce it on, on social media, don't forget to tag um, Hipsitch Academy because I definitely want to hear what your goals are, especially if they are sewing business um, goals related to that. Okay. So I hope that you've had some time off. It is Monday. Um, that's no longer Monday morning, but, um, at least where I am, actually, it's probably Monday morning, maybe some, where some of you are. Um, but the Monday after a big break, you know, the big holiday after the new year can be kind of a crazy day. So hopefully you're having a semi-tame uh, Monday after the break. I actually got to bed really early last night and I got up really early this morning. Not super early, but I got up early and got out of the house and I did a little workout and got to the studio by 8 a.m., kind of avoiding all of the back to school traffic, back to work traffic. I got in here and I've just been kind of working like a crazy person since I got in. I, um, actually had a couple private lessons as well. So done a lot today and hopefully um, you have too. All right. So today's live cast is going to be about summer camp planning. But just in case you don't know me, I'm Megan Avery. I am the creator of Hip Stitch Academy. I've been coming um, into Zoom and in now into Facebook Live to... Uh, do like a little kind of live class just about sewing business or business in general. Um, and hopefully that's been helpful for you. And I want to say thank you for watching if you are watching right now. Anyway, I also um, teach sewing. So that's kind of what Hip Stitch Academy is about helping other people to have a successful sewing business. My studio happens to be located in Hoboken, New Jersey, and we've been teaching kids and adults how to sew in the studio for about 15 years now. Um, I thought my first class was in 2005. I was actually like backing up my laptop this weekend and found some photos from a workshop in 2004 for the fall of 2004. So maybe I taught my first class in 2004. It's not always reliable just because of the date on the photo, but anyway, kind of interesting. Always fun to like go back and, and check your photos for, you know, kind of history. I'm terrible at keeping track of when things happen, what year and, and all that. So I rely a lot on um, files on my computer. <laughs> um, 
So I'm super happy that you found me and my little community Hip Stitch Academy. I started about three years ago. I just wanted to meet other people like you. And in the meantime, I found that I really love helping all of you, um, you know, create a more successful sewing business. We share all of our sewing class curriculum. I do a little bit of coaching for people who need a little bit more accountability. And we have some online training programs. Some of them are free, some of them are paid. You can find all of that on hipstitch.co or I think what you can also find us at hipstitchacademy.com. Okay. Um, one of my goals um, is to do this once a week. I'm going to come in and teach you about something. We have a whole schedule of classes that are coming up and you can find that on hipstitch.co slash video classes. Definitely, um, it's a good thing to get signed up for those because what it does is it gives you little reminders of when we're about to go live. Um, so if you like watching it live, um, you get a reminder like a week ahead, an hour or a day ahead, and then a week before we actually go. So it's actually um, 1 p.m. Eastern time, but on different days of the week. So check that schedule. And then if you miss the live class, that's totally fine because I always post it in a video blog on the His Stitch Sewing Teacher blog. Um, that can be found at hipstitch.co slash blog if you're going to watch it there. But it's always great to watch it live because you can, um, you can put your hand up. You can ask questions. So I can see, um, you know, if you have a question, what your questions are. Um, you can ask them what's going on. And that's what I'm actually kind of just looking at right now to see who's on and to see if there are any questions. So that's one of the bonuses of watching it live. So again, if you want to check that schedule, it's hipstitch.co slash video classes. Okay. So moving in, let's jump into today's topic. Um, so I'm guessing you're here either watching it live or watching the video because you are interested in possibly teaching kids sewing classes over the summer. Um, so we call it our kids sewing camp, right? Um, or maybe you have a camp already, you've been running it successfully and you're just here to kind of maybe see if you can get a few extra pointers. I love that. Um, but if you're thinking of starting one, you haven't done one yet, I think that's a great idea because with a sewing business like this, a sewing camp in the summer is a huge, um, it's a very profitable event. So, um, you know, often when I look at the sales and where they come from in a full year, if I look at all the sales generated from our kids summer camp, which is for us 10 weeks in the summer. Um, and we have a very like regular schedule throughout the 52 weeks of the year. Like we pretty much have sewing classes every single week, but those 10 weeks make up more than a third of our revenue. Um, and I've actually talked to a lot of other people who do this business as well and have summer camps and maybe they're not as consistent about having classes or they don't have adult classes and their summer camp sales will be over half, if not even more than that, um, of the sales generated for the entire year for their business. So sewing camp is huge. If you're thinking about it, um, it's definitely a cool thing. The other really cool thing about summer camp is the kids are here consistently. You know, they have chunks of time that um, they wouldn't normally have during the school year. Like during the school year, we can have an after school class for an hour or two hours, or we can have them in for a birthday party for two hours. But with a summer camp, they're here consistently um, for three hours or even six hours at a time. We do a full day camp and some kids choose to stay the full day. So it's, it's, you get a chance to really teach kids how to sew and it's fun to watch them go from having no idea how to use a sewing machine to be really, to being really adept um, sewers 
after they've gone through one of our camps. So I am 100% think that anybody that's teaching sewing that hasn't taught a summer camp is a go for it. Okay, so um, we are gonna um, talk about, I think, five, six topics of discussion relating to kids' summer camps. So the first thing is scheduling. As I mentioned, will your camp be a half a day? Will it be a full day? Are you gonna do it five days a week? Or maybe you're only gonna do three days out of the week. That's all totally up to you. Ooh, this is fun. <laughs> so this is a live class and it is Hoboken, New Jersey. We're at one o'clock on Monday, a street sweep. So that's what that noise was, if you just heard it. I think it's going away now. Okay, scheduling. Half days, full days, five days a week, three days a week, all those things are your choice. Um, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. I'm gonna talk a little bit about aftercare and before care as well and help you know maybe generate some uh, brainstorming about what you might, might wanna do for your camp. Um, the next thing is we'll talk about registration. And that's really important because how are people gonna sign up? Um, and which registration software should you use? Because the old like come in and fill out a piece of paper and hand a check over, I mean, I guess it works, but there's some better ways that are gonna make your registration process a lot easier and then therefore have more people signing up. All right, then number three, we're gonna talk about where we're gonna hold our camp. You may not have a studio already, that should not stop you from having your own summer camp. Um, there are plenty of places to have it. Number four, we're gonna talk about um, working the summer camps and who is going to uh, work at those summer camps, besides you, obviously. And then five, we're gonna talk about curriculum. What are you gonna teach the kids at these summer camps? And then number six, we're going to briefly talk about marketing. This could be a whole other video in itself. So I'm going to just touch on some things and lead you in some directions for other things that I posted on the blog about specific marketing stuff. So let's jump right into it. The first topic of discussion, scheduling your kids' summer camp, um, is deciding which weeks you're going to have your camp. So basically, I suggest going on Google real quick and just do a Google search for the schools in your area. Find out when they are gonna be out. Find out the last day of school, find out when they're gonna be going back to school, and then that's kind of your window for when you can teach summer camp, right? Um, so that's pretty easy to sort of determine. And, um, also, you know, don't just look for the public schools. Look up if you know of private schools in your area too. I would check their schedules because sometimes they get out a little earlier than the public schools and it can be worth it to start a camp a week before maybe the masses get out of school. Like I hold a camp mid-June, um, which is kind of before the public schools get out, but I hold it because there aren't a lot of other camps going on and some of the private school parents are very happy to have the choice of, you know, this camp going on in a week that there isn't a lot of other things going on. So it can be worth it to maybe do a camp prior to when most people are running camps. And then also even, um, doing it right up to when school starts. Also, a lot of camps will stop their programming one or two weeks before school actually starts. We always go right up to Labor Day, which we're on the East Coast, so Labor Day is usually kind of marks when kids go back to school. We'll do a camp right up to then, and it's usually pretty full because, again, there's, you know, even though maybe a lot of people are on vacation at that point, there's still a lot of people around and they're looking for things to do. So, things to consider. All right, um, next thing that you wanna decide is how long your camp should be during the day. Now, um, people will do a half day, people will do a full day, people will do like a nine to two or nine to one, which is kind of like a half day hybrid. Um, so 
you know, really just depends on what you can offer and what kind of staffing you have and what, you know, works with your schedule. But for us, we do two, three hour sessions. So we do a session in the morning from nine to 12. And then we do a session in the afternoon from one to four. And then we have a bring your own lunch from uh, 12 to one where people, you know, if you're staying for the full day, you bring your bagged lunch and we have a little lunch time here where they're obviously all supervised, they're eating. And then we usually have some sort of activity that does not involve sewing until that afternoon session starts. So working parents like it because they can drop off at nine, pick up at four, and they know that their kids are supervised all day. But then you have the flexibility for people who maybe just want a half a day of sewing. And we schedule our projects out so that there's one project in the morning, one project in the afternoon. And we try to finish that project in the three hour time frame. If we do great, if we don't, our camps are one full week. So we just the next day, we'll finish it up if we have to. And then usually on Friday, we have a, a project that we make sure that they finish because not necessarily, you know, not every kid is going to be coming back the next week, right? So it needs to be finished on Friday. So these are all kinds of things that you can think about when you're scheduling your camp, right? Hopefully that you find them helpful. All right. So, oh, the last thing I wanted to say too is we will incentivize someone to come for a full day where, you know, so we have our pricing for the half days, morning, afternoon, but then you get a slightly discounted price if you sign up for that full day. And I think I find that to be helpful to incentivize people to actually sign up for a full day. All right, so, oh, and then one of the things I, I wanted to mention around this is that we are in a building. It's a building of five floors. There's all kinds of camp things. There's Legos, there's science, there's um, like there's dance camps, there's, you know, all kinds of things that can go and be great partners with the half day of sewing. So what we do is we'll partner up with the different camps, whereas a kid could go to a dance camp in the morning, bring their lunch, and then we would pick them up at dance camp to come for a full day. Um, or to come for the afternoon, giving them a full day and parents don't have to kind of shuffle them back and forth. The parents make the arrangements with us beforehand and they've got a full day camp in one building. Or, you know, if, if for, you know, you're not in a building, maybe there's things going wrong around you within like a five minute walk or something. That can be a really great way to offer an added service for your families. Um, and along those same lines, we don't personally offer a before or after care. We start at nine, we end at four. We really don't have any interest in coming in before or after. I mean, we're here, you know, usually setting up and picking up, but we don't want to have an extended care program. But some of the camps in the building where we are do, and so we'll partner with them so that parents can drop their kid off maybe at 8 a.m., pick them up at five if they're working and they have a longer day, we'll bring them back and forth to before care or to after care. So that's another thing to consider for your families for summer camp. All right, so moving on, um, I want to talk about registration. Um, so it is 2020 and you definitely need to have a registration system that allows people to sign up for camp way before camp starts. They should be able to sign up for it and they should be able to pay for it beforehand. And you can kind of figure out the terms of payment if you want to make it where they pay a deposit on when they sign up and then they pay the balance by a certain date. Most registration softwares can handle that but you need to do it beforehand. And the other thing you really, really have to make sure is that the registration software works really well on your phone because, you know, nobody's sitting down. I mean, maybe if they're at work or something and they're signing their kid up, sure, but you've got to really find a registration software that works really well on the phone. It makes such a difference. I think that, if you're, if it's not easy to sign up on your phone, you're going to lose registrations because of it. 
And believe me, the reason I know this is because mine has not always been phone friendly. Um, it's just been in the last couple of years where I've made sure that the registration software is phone friendly. Um, and parents really like that. They like that they can do it very easily and have a system that works and, and is secure so they can put their credit card in and it works seamlessly so that then you know exactly who's going to show up for each week of camp right? Because you only have so many spots. Um, so there's tons of registration softwares to choose from. And especially now, this has become, you know, such a popular thing that if you do some Google searches, you'll find many, many options, probably more options than you want to even think about. But for, you know, for example, for us, we use Sawyer, which is a registration software um, that is a little bit more expensive than some of them, but we use it for the first time last summer and it is worth, you know, it's not even that much more, but it is, it is worth the extra money um, because it's such an easy system to implement into your website and then it's an easy system for parents you know it's very clear it works really well you can add multiple siblings um, you know it you can add things on if there are other things that you're selling like maybe a camp t-shirt or something you can add these things on parents pay for it and again you can have them paying in full or doing deposits Sawyer takes care of all of that. And this is not an ad for Sawyer. I'd love it if they, if they paid me to talk about their service, but I'm just doing this because I really do feel strongly about their registration software. However, on the lower end of things, um, there's also Acuity Scheduling, which doesn't, um, doesn't keep track of as much information. However, it does serve as a place that parents can sign up their kids. They can pay for their kids ahead of time and it creates a list of who's going to show up for camp you know from this week to this week and this week to this week so that's another option if you haven't checked it out already it's called acuity scheduling also really great and very minimal i think it's 25 dollars they i think they have a free option and then i think it goes up to like 25 dollars a month plus the credit card fees so really really reasonable um, so yeah, make sure you start thinking about that now. If you don't already have a registration software, figure out something that works really well. And I guarantee that it'll make a difference in the registration for your camp. Okay. All right. Moving along, we're going to talk about where you're going to hold your camp. If you don't already have a designated sewing studio where you hold classes. And that is okay because there are so many places that you can teach a sewing camp. Um, and even though I've had my sewing studio um, that I'm in right now uh, for a long time, I've actually also taught camps, birthday parties, workshops, all these things in other locations in addition to at my studio, I've taught them in churches and schools and yoga studios, in boys and girls clubs, in uh, restaurants, coffee shops, YMCA's, art studios, bars, um, co-working spaces, let's see, the library, I've taught classes at the library. I've taught it in people's houses if they've had parties. You know, probably don't want to teach at camp at someone's house. Um, but let's see, I've taught in my own house. Also, you probably don't want to teach at camp at your own house. But some of the other options are good. Um, and then even outside. And there's so many camps now too that are held like at the schools that they want other vendors to come in. So you don't necessarily even have to be like a designated sewing camp you could be someone that comes into the Hoboken Public School summer camp and offer their sewing portion of their sewing camp. So there's so many options if you don't have your own sewing studio. So don't get down about that um, when thinking about summer camp. And yeah, if you're looking for a place to hold your camp, I encourage you to brainstorm some places, write down a list, 
and just start kind of going through the list. Don't, you know, judge any of your sponsors, just make your list and then start reaching out and figure out where you can actually hold your camp. All right, moving on, we're gonna talk about curriculum. Um, and, you know, you can teach whatever you want in a sewing camp. I talked a little bit about how great summer camp can be when you offer a Monday through Friday camp or a Monday through Wednesday camp. They come in on Monday, they have no idea how to sew, and you teach them. So you spend a lot of Monday teaching the kids how to use the machines, how to safely cut, how to, um, you know, how to pin, you know, and how to properly handle a pin cushion. All those things you teach them on the first day. And then as they keep coming and they keep coming, they become really great at it, right? So they come and they, um, uh, let's see. Sorry, I got distracted by um, someone raising their hand. But yeah, you, you, you get to see them on this ongoing basis, right? You get to see them become better and better at sewing throughout the week. So with a curriculum, you can kind of choose maybe really basic stuff or a basic project for the first day and then get consecutively um, more challenging throughout the week, depending on how many days of camp that you have. Um, so yeah, you can pick whatever projects you want. I would say just figure out what you want to teach um, ahead of time. I am a firm believer in not specifically saying exactly what project we're going to work on because, you know, you may have a week where the kids are like really, really young and you may have to go back and change the projects. Um, because you were planning on doing some things that were maybe a little bit more complicated than they needed to be. So I just, I'm a firm believer in like, give them a theme or give them an idea of, of the types of things that you'll be making in the camp before they sign up, but maybe leave the actual project to yourself. Um, and I've only, you know, I just know that from experience when we make promises about making certain things and then for whatever reason, we can't make exactly what we said. We just don't want anybody to be disappointed. You want to have the leeway to change your lesson plan if you need to. So that's just a little uh, tip. Um, but I do, you know, we create a bunch of curriculum here at Hipstitch Academy, and these are all the projects that we use in our summer camps. So they're literally five projects um, per theme, one project for each day, and the projects go from easiest to more challenging um, as we go along the five projects. And all of our curriculum, it includes, one, it includes a lesson plan tutorial. It's basically the teacher's step-by-step -step guide for how to make the project. We also include a student tutorial, which was sort of a simplified version of the lesson plan um, with the step-by-step -step photographs and simple instructions for how that's made. You can choose to show the kids the lesson plan, I mean the tutorial if you want to, or you can keep that to yourself and just do demo. Um, and then also in our curriculum packages, we include the pattern, obviously, so you can cut out the pieces that you need for the project. And then we also always include three photographs, high-res photographs you can use in your marketing materials. Again, you don't have to market exactly that you're making the camera handbag that day or whatever you're making, but these photographs can be used on your website when you are advertising your camp. All right, so that's curriculum. Um, and then the last part of today, what I wanted to just talk about really briefly is getting people to sign up. And I encourage you, it's January 6th, to start thinking about this now, you know, like you're going to start probably in June or in July for your camps. And this is giving you a nice, you know, five month um, window to start getting the word out. Like if you have a registration software that you're using, get the weeks up there. You don't have to say what the themes are. You don't have to say what you're going to be making, but get the scheduling up there so that the parents will see, 
okay, from July 11th to July 16th, you know, the camp is going on from 9 a.m. to 12 and from 1 to 4. Just give those time frames as soon as you possibly can. You can make the registration a little more in depth as you start to figure out what exactly you're gonna offer, but get that up there. So if people are visiting your website and excited about seeing what you're offering for camp, you have something up there. Don't just leave it blank because then people maybe will think that you're not gonna have anything. So get that going as soon as you can. That's my biggest piece of advice for getting signups for summer 2020. The other thing is, you know, it, it's all the other things that I write about and I talk about all the time. It's email marketing, it's developing that list, getting people on the list, reminding them that, hey, summer camp registration has started, reserve your spot. Talk about, um, talk about, you know, just the fact that you don't have a million spaces. It's that scarcity mentality when you're dealing with your marketing. Make sure people know that you've only got eight spots or you've only got 16 or however many you've got. And when they fill, they fill and there's no more room. So that's a great way to start generating signups very quickly. And, you know, don't get discouraged if it's February and you haven't gotten any signups. People are just starting to check their schedules. They're trying to figure out exactly when, but then gently start encouraging people on your social media, in your email marketing. Remind them that you, you know, it's up there, how many spots you have left. And then but along the same lines of scarcity, the thing that I find that really works in my email marketing as we get closer to camp is I'll have two spots in a certain week. Um, and I let the, the people in the email know exactly how many spots I have left for each week of camp. And that is a really, really effective to, way to, to let people know, hey, put up or you know, sign up or you're not gonna be able to sign up because I've only got so many spots. So yeah, include how many spots you have left in your email marketing. And if there are live events going on in the spring around summer camps or just around craft fairs or things by where you are that generate a lot of foot traffic, so participate in them. See if you can figure out a way to get your sewing machine there, either if they have electricity or if you've got some sort of generator that you can use to have a small sewing activity to promote your camps. That's a great way to get people involved with sewing, to try sewing, and then get signed up for your camps. Um, and then, you know, if you're already doing after school classes, it's kind of a no brainer to make sure that you, um, you get people knowing that you have a summer camp. Like with all of our um, in school classes, I just have a little flyer that I send home, you know, the last, you know, usually I start sending it home, I guess like March. Um, hey, we have a summer camp. We love having your kid in our after school class. Have you considered doing our summer camp? Little things like that. Make sure you clear it with the school if you're sending it home with kids at your school, but if they're at your studio, make sure there's big signs in the studio that tell everybody where, you know, when, and when your camps are running and get people to sign up that way. Um, and I think that is about it. Don't forget to check the blog, um, hipstitch.co slash blog. And then if you look in the categories, there's a marketing category. Literally, I have so many blog posts just about marketing your classes. So if you want more info on that, which I feel like everybody's always like, give me more marketing tips. There's plenty there. So check that out. Um, this is literally like the tip of the iceberg for summer camp stuff. I can't, you know, go into too much more detail now. I'm going to sort of wind down this video, but I have a very in-depth training that's launching. I, um, I, I am doing, it's a four part summer camp specific. I'm calling it the summer camp uh, Success Academy. I think that's, it's a working title. I think that's what I'm going with. Um, but it's going to be a very in-depth training on making your most profitable summer camp. If you've never had a summer camp, 
that should be pretty easy to do. But even if you've had a summer camp in the past, I'm gonna um, just kind of give you above and beyond tips for scaling that camp, growing that camp, and making it the best camp that you've ever done yet. So be on the lookout for that. It's launching at the end of January. I'm hard at work on that. And if you enjoyed this video class, please let me know. Shoot me an email or DM me in social media. We're at Hipstitch Academy. And I'd love to hear from you. I love to hear what you like. If you hated this video, oh my gosh, let me know. I can handle it. Please tell me what I can do better. Always looking for tips on that. Um, what else? If you want... Um, I would appreciate it, I should say, if you spread the word. I know you have a big circle of social media um, followers and people who you follow who do this all over the world. Share this with them. Let them know they're not your competitors. And even if they were, who cares? You know, we want to share what the things that we find. If you are following great blogs in Australia or England or Mississippi or wherever you are, share this um training that i've been doing with other people screenshot this video post it up there say what you like about it um if you don't like the video i'd appreciate it. maybe don't put it on social media let me know personally first but um i have a feeling that you know i think this is a pretty good video i don't know only you can tell um Anyway, next week we're going to be meeting on Tuesday at one o'clock Eastern is the live time. So catch um, that live video. And uh, let's see, I do. Um, I don't think we have any questions. And if you do find that you have questions when you're watching the video, just put it in the comments on YouTube or, uh, like I said, social media works as well. Until next time, Tuesday, 1 o'clock, I will um, catch you then. Bye.